Now that we know how to navigate our viewport, set up our window layout, and tweak our settings, let's start building our game, learning some important core information along the way. Today we're going to be going through the basics of adding objects to your scene and creating a simple blueprint script to get familiarized with those core concepts for those of you that don't know the basics behind them. After that, we can start building all the parts of our basic game. Let me introduce myself, Insomnia from Unreal Tech, a division of Blender Tech, and welcome to another video. If you enjoyed or learned something, consider liking and subscribing for more Unreal, Blender, coding, and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So let's jump right in. Let's start a new project by hitting launch in the Epic's Game Launcher. I'll make quick notes for users coming from Unity, but once these basics are out of the way, I'll rarely if ever be mentioning Unity in the rest of the video series. So we have to decide where are we going to start. A totally blank project? A template? Are we going to use Blueprint? Are we going to code in C++? What are we going to be using? So let's go to New Project. That should be what you see by default if you have no projects, but if you don't, click New Project. And again, we decide are we going to be using Blueprint scripting? or C++ coding. Now remember that you can always add each of these to their counterparts, so don't feel committed by any of these. I like to use the third person setup. Even though Unreal is made for first person shooters generally, it's actually done quite well with third person games lately and I, uh, I find it a very good starting point. We're gonna add starter content. So make sure you click no starter content and select with starter content. That way we have some shapes and stuff to play around with and some materials and some particle emitters that so we don't have to waste time going through them in this 101 series. Now just simply choose a directory that you want your project folder to be in and give it a name. I'm going to call it intro to UE4. You are limited to 20 characters and no spaces, so give a descriptive title but keep it short. Then just hit create project and let's jump right in. So with starter content in the blueprint based third person template, we are shown the following window. Now I do suggest that you follow the tutorial here for this little spinning icon, the open help URL or double clicking on third person overview. I suggest you watch both of those tutorials, they're very good, but I'll leave that for you to do on your own time. First let's use some of the starter content and the starter content folder to drag a few basic things in and see how placing objects works very quickly. And then we'll create an example blueprint just to introduce you to blueprint scripting. I'm going to assume that my viewers have little to no programming experience so I won't be using any technical terms and any ones that do come up I'll make sure to explain in as simple of terms as I can. So make sure you have the starter content folder open in your content browser down here. And let's find a sphere mesh. So let's go under props. And we have all sorts of things to use. Let's take material sphere, a static mesh. So that means it's a static mesh that has no bones in it. It's just a simple sphere. No different than the one that you could drag in from the stock um, basic mode. But this one has a little bit more you can do with it right out of the box. Because it's part of the starter content. It's got some different geometry and such. So you can see how we can just drag and drop stuff right in. However, you'll notice how because the center point, that's that's where the gizmo is for moving everything, is right in the center of this object, it goes right to the middle of the floor. This is something you will have to be aware of when you start making your own meshes. Something that has its its center point right on the bottom of its mesh, it'll it'll go right on the floor like that. But let's start with our sphere. So let's just place a sphere in the level. Easy as that. All I'm going to ask you to do is just take some of take some of these static meshes, take some cubes from here, take some spheres, cylinders, whatever, and make a little maze out of them. I'm not going to go through that, but it's pretty basic. All you do is you just drag in what you want, you move it with the gizmos, you can choose snapping sizes in here to snap them to more exact positions and you can turn off snapping altogether to get very precise. You can also rotate them by pressing E or the button up here. We went over all of this, same deal, and R to scale. So build yourself a nice little maze level. I'm not going to worry too much about it. In fact, I'm just going to use the stock level for our game. We can select the third person text. 
we can take text and we can call it our game. You can delete it all together. It's completely your choice. I'm gonna get rid of the green spinning icon. I find it a little annoying and that should be good for now. If we hit play, we have our little game to play through. Making yourself a little maze will add a little bit more to this game, but it's not required. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to drag and drop uh, a mesh into your project. So let's get into some very, very basics of blueprints. Take one of the meshes that you've added. So let's say that I've added this material sphere, this little sphere. I'm gonna add it right on the top of the stairs and I am going to turn my snapping down. I'm just gonna place it roughly in position at the corner up here so that our player could hit it. Nothing too fancy though. Obviously if we hit play and we go and we hit it, nothing happens, pretty boring. So first let's learn about the basics of blueprints. Blueprints can be added to almost anything. You can right click and create a blueprint class and it gives you the different main blueprint classes as well as the plethora of other blueprint classes you can use as your base class. I won't be getting into base classes and inheritance this early on in the series. So for now we're just going to be choosing a static mesh that we've put into the level and then we're going to hit blueprint slash add script. Then we'll choose a place to store it. I, I suggest just storing it in the main content folder for now and give it something meaningful. I like to start my blueprints with BP underscore and then what it's called. So I'm just gonna call this BP underscore sphere at top of stairs. Pretty descriptive. Doesn't make a lot of sense for a game object, but it'll work. You'll see it instantly brings us to it. If we hover over it, you see the blueprint class is a static mesh actor. Now an actor is anything placed in the world. This is an actor, this is an actor, this is an actor. Anything you place in the world is all based off an actor. So what this is, it's an actor that's a static mesh. Notice the little asterisk, we talked about that before. That means it's unsaved. When you wanna save, just make sure you go file save all or control s and those will go away and your entire project including the level will be saved you'll see all the asterisks will go away so how do we add some visual scripting to our sphere well just double click on our blueprint in the content browser or with it selected by clicking on it in our scene we can hit edit blueprint and then open blueprint editor with one of those you'll get this window so here we have the viewport in here is where you'll see every component you add. If I was to add a box collision component, you'll see that we now have a box collider in there. We can hit delete to get rid of it. We can also transform stuff. So if I was to add a sphere, just like this one, we can transform it. So the same is in the editor, except now if I was to compile and save, we now have a big egg attached to our sphere but we won't need that. I just wanted to show you how you can add components into your viewport in your blueprint and then it, it will become one in its own. But let's get into some logic. The construction script we're gonna ignore for now. We'll get into inheritance after, so we can just close that off for now. For right now, we wanna stick with event graph. The stock events, these are the ones in red that are grayed out right now since there's nothing attached to them, are the ones we're going to be focusing on. So for those of you from Unity, I'm going to make a quick note, however this is going to make sense to Unreal users too that are brand new. Event begin play. What this does is every time you start this level, so basically every time we press play, this execution chain so whatever is connected to this arrow they will get executed it'll go boom 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 right at the very second you hit play event actor begin overlap again you can see when you hover over things it gives you a good description that's when something uh basically kind of almost touches it again if we had a component like the cube collider and we scaled it up now, anytime the player walks into this yellow space, you won't see it in the game, but anytime the player does, it, we, this one will fire off, and anything that goes down its chain will fire off. We will be using that, but we'll delete that box collider for now. And event tick. This is the one you'll be using most often. This is called every single frame, so pretty basic. We also have custom events. So if we right-click and type in a key that we want, say W, 
it should bring you to the key. If not, just find it in the list. If you don't see it, sometimes you have to check off context sensitive and that'll show you every single node available for you in this, in this blueprint. But that can get quite confusing. So unless you can't find it, context sensitive is a lot easier to find things. So if I select W, now I have a W that when I press it, this fires off. When I release it, this fires off right down the chain. We went over that a little bit last time, but we won't be using that yet. For now, let's just start simple. So event tick every single frame and event begin play right when we hit play. So let's start with event begin play. Now these little boxes up here are comment boxes. There's two types of ways to comment things. Let me go back and add the W key to show this. The first one is just a standard comment. You do this by selecting a node or a collection of nodes and then pressing C on your keyboard. Then you could type in a comment. This is a comment. You can resize it and you can drag all those around. Or if you don't want that, you can go into the details and choose it just to comment and then you can put it wherever you want, however you want, and it won't bring the nodes around. So that's one way to make comments so that both you and any team members in the future know exactly what's going on. Secondly, if you hover over the top of any node, you'll see that little dot 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 box come up. If you click that, that brings up a little comment box and then you can of course put anything in it. This node does this when W is pressed. And then you can also toggle it by pressing that button and you can bring it back by pressing it again. This one up here, it prevents it from scaling. You can see that scales no matter how far we zoom in or out. If we click it again, it makes it nice and small again. Anyways, delete that. So let's start with event begin play. So the very first thing, the very first code that anybody ever does is hello world. So let's do a hello world. So drag off of the little execution pin right on event begin play, drag off of it, let go with your left mouse button and this box will come up and let's type in print string. Now what print string does is it will print a little string to the corner of your window and to the console log. So this is great for debugging. If you don't know if something is working, just connect a print string to your logic and you'll be able to know what's going on. By the way, what is logic for people that don't know if I ever use that word? Logic is this. Logic is something that's happening in your game that causes something to happen. It's the computer thinking. It's the computer being logical, although not always. So anyways, let's just type in hello world, just as you would in any intro to programming course. We could leave a little comment if you wanted, on these ones, you can say when this level is started and play is pressed, we print the string hello world. So now that we're done that, let's hit compile, save, make sure we don't lose it. Then we'll go back to our map and now let's hit play and see what happens. Notice in the corner we have hello world that popped up for a second. And if we press the tilde key, that's the key just to the left of the one, you can see it's in our in our console log and it also ends up in window developer tools output log you'll see down here we have log blueprint user message hello world so let's stop our game let's make this a little more interesting let's drag off from event tick and do the same thing print string this time we'll just leave it as hello. Compile. This time, let's hit play right in here. I wanna show you something. See, first of all, that hello's printing all over. We're getting tons of them. That's because it's one every frame at about 100 frames per second. But notice also back in our blueprint window, if we drag this out of the way, we can see each frame getting executed down the line. This is very, very helpful for debugging so you know which way your blueprint is going at all time. When I hit escape to close the game, it stops. But let's add something more interesting let's drag off event tick let's search add actor and we get a few choices we want local rotation so this will rotate the actor aka it will rotate our object in local space local space just means local to the sphere instead of local to the entire world and delta rotation of course if you've gone through high school you know delta just means a change 
and rotation obviously describes itself. Now we have R, P, and Y. Now what does that mean? That's because this is a rotator. You'll see if I quickly make a variable, I'm not gonna give it a name and choose a rotator. And we'll get into variables soon, but if I drag this out and get it, you'll see if I split it apart, that stands for roll, yaw, and pitch. So depending on the axis of your object, generally pitch, means you're rotating along the y-axis. Yaw means you're rotating along the z-axis, so in a circle. And roll usually means you're rotating along the, the red x-axis. So we wanna add some yaw, so we just wanna turn it. Since this is every single frame, and this is, this is measured in degrees per second. So let's just say one degree per second, see what happens. Compile, save, play. Not a lot's happening. Let's try something more like 10. It's not moving, what the heck? This is something to be aware of. Select your static mesh component in any window. You can even do it in the editor if you want. Notice that it is set to static. That means that, but it cannot be moved. If we want something to move, we need to make it movable. So if it has any sort of movement, if it's not just a prop, you want it to be movable. Now let's see what happens. Check movable off with static mesh component and then compile, save, play, and look at that. Our sphere is rotating on its axis. Pretty cool. How can we use this to build logic? Let's take static mesh component and let's actually change it to something that we can see rotating. Something like say a, a wedge, a nice triangle shape. Let's add, add actor. Let's go world rotation again, or sorry, local rotation again and then after that let's add a print string and then after that let's add a delay of five seconds and then after that let's add a add actor local offset this moves your component now this is in a vector a vector is just simply a location in x y and z and delta you can see it means a change again so let's make it move up and rotate. So to do that, we want to move it in the Z. Let's go 25 units, because remember that's centimeters in Unreal. So we have this whole execution that's going to get called every frame. But notice we have this delay in here. Let's hit play. I'm going to hit pause really quick. Now notice that it's on our delay and there's five seconds left. I'm going to unpause the game now. Just watch the blueprint window. So our delay goes down. It's printing print string. It's rotating and then... Boom, it moves up. Let's watch this in the game window. So it's it's doing its thing. Boom, it moves up. I forgot to add any rotation numbers, sorry. But after five seconds, boom, it moves up. So of course you can get creative with this. If we have if we had remembered to add our rotation, compile, play. Just like that. So you can create the craziest things in the world you're only limited by your creativity drag something off and find something that looks useful if you don't know how to use it look for a tutorial and turn off context sensitive because sometimes it hides a lot but that's that's 101 for blueprints that's how you can create a little bit of logic this is really all i want to get to in this video today how to place objects and how to make basic logic in our next video, we're going to be creating pickups out of these so that when we pick them up, it tells us that we're picking them up and getting points. And we'll be adding some color to them. So we'll get to that in our next video and we'll have an actual game, if you want to call it that, by then. So thanks for watching from the team here at Unreal Tech, division of BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve our videos based on your community input. We also take requests. So we'll see you next time. Remember, create your way.